So shall we go to your cases? Uh, Dr. Kaimak, do you want to start with uh, your next cases? Yes, um, some presentation with patients with DME. And I think you have also in your routine, in your practice, those patients, uh, they refuse intravitreal injections and the laser treatment uh, because they are afraid of any invasive treatment. So this was one of the patients where we tried the uh, photobiomodulation and you see the patients with this intraretinal fluid uh, which disappears after nine treatments. You see the flatten of the retina and you see that this uh, holds on for the next three months. So it is possible uh, for those patients who really refuse to any invasive treatment then you can offer these patients uh, the photobiomodulation. This patient also with a little bit of macular edema you see the fovea depressions and a very good visual acuity. You see those patients uh, and you really don't know what to do with them. Should we do the intravitreal injections or we should do the subthreshold laser in this case or do we nothing, just wait. And also I think this is a very good candidate for starting with this photobiomodulation when you uh, just want to get some experience with this new uh, treatment modality. And also here you can see you have a little bit improvement, little bit disappearance of the intraretinal fluid. So Starting with those patients in diabetic macular edema, I think it's a good uh, possibility. You have also patients with more intraretinal fluid, and but also again with a very good visual acuity. And you are afraid of, I think, when you should do here an intravitreal injection, the patient would get an endophthalmitis, it would be really a disaster um, when you treat those patients. And also here with nine treatments within 11 weeks, you have a little bit improvement. Uh, you see that the intraretinal fluid is disappearing. So these are very good candidates to start with your photobiomodulation in your new area of treatment. Again, uh, in this case, we have an improvement in visual acuity. Uh, it's um, not very much, but it's enough for the patient and you can do it without intravitreal injections. That means patients with a very good visual acuity where it's ethically okay when you wait, when you do no treatment or when you just uh, wait for the intravitreal injection just to see what happened. This could be very good candidates for the photobiomodulation. In this case, we do a combination where we do the intravitreal injection and then after the injection, uh, we do the photobiomodulation. You see also an improvement in in this page with the uh, with the photobiomodulation there is still intra uh, vitreal fluid i think in diabetic macular edema you can combine it when the edema is going away and you want to have a fine tuning and the visual quality these are good indications for patients with diabetic macular edema um, we look for the central thickness of the uh, macula and you see that most of the patients after nine treatments within three weeks uh, you have a reduction uh, in the macula thickness so the macular edema is going away and it's and it holds on for several weeks that means here i think it's a new possibility for treatment alone with uh, photobiomodulation or in combination with antivitreal therapy. And what is very important is the questionnaire when you are talking to the patients. This improvement uh, is very important for the daily routine uh, work and you see that most of the patients they get this feeling that the visual quality, the visual uh, is going better 
uh, in most of the cases, uh, and this I think it's a very good indication or for the possibility for treating those patients. You know, diabetic patients are not easy and to handle, and when you got a new tool for fine tuning the visual acuity, uh, this helps you in the, your daily work. Dr. Oduniak, uh, we would like to share your experience. Uh, this patient came to our clinic with a very big retinal pigmentary epithelium detachment. Uh, then we offer to the patients uh, to the patient a treatment, but not with laser because uh, could be dangerous in these cases. You could have a, a very big tear in the in the retinal pigment epithelium with nano lasers in these cases, or with other lasers. And then we offer a photobiomodulation treatment, and the results the result was amazing. Uh, these patients, the, in this in this case, the retinal pigment epithelium the detachment uh, diminished a lot. Uh, the subretinal fluid uh, gone out of the retina, and the visual acuity of the patient rise 22 letters. In this case, it was incredible. And uh, after these results, we suspect uh, a neovascular membrane and the retina. And then after this image, we start to treat with intravitreal. And the patient is still uh, maintained with very good visual acuity. But this result was only with photobiomodulation, nine uh, sessions in one month. But in chronic CSC uh, patients, we have, we, we have been seeing things like this. Patient who has been treated with micropulse laser or with nanopulse laser, after the treatment, the, the macula uh, is still uh, with uh, some diminution in the retinal sensitivity. And then we offer photobiomodulation and the patient feels better. Sometimes the microperimeter doesn't change, but the patient feels better. And another amazing case that we have uh, been treating is amblyopia cases. Uh, in, this, uh, in this case, the patient has an amblyopia. Uh, the visual acuity was 20 letters in this case. The patients uh, report problem using the personal computer and Closing uh, the non-amblyopic A, the patient cannot walk safely outdoors. Post-treatment, post, post, post nine sessions of um, photobiomodulation, closing the non-amblyopic A, the patient can walk outdoors uh, by hours and, go, uh, and can go uh, walking, uh, making trekking in the mountain closing the, the non amblyopic A, and then the quality of life of this patient improves a lot. The visual acuity improves more than 10 letters, and the image was less pixelated. Then I think it could be an opportunity, photomyomodulation could be an opportunity for patients suffering from amblyopia. Out of the of the modifying period in child. This is an adult patient with amblyopia, with 40 years old. I think really that for the patients with very good visual acuity, where you are thinking not to do the intravitreal injection, where you can wait for the treatment, these are the candidates where we should start with the photobiomodulation. It seems, as you say, for patients, uh, there could be a benefit for pa diabetic patients with, them, with early maculopathy, with a minimum of intraretinal fluid and still good vision. Patients who uh, you want to, where you want to avoid uh, intravitreal injections, or perhaps an adjuvant to intravitreal therapy. Yes, I think we know that we have this inflammatory disease in uh, diabetic macular edema, and it, when it goes too much high levels uh, of these cytokines, so it is very difficult just to uh, 
get it uh, with just one treatment with just photobiomodulation i think then a combination therapy should be very good in those cases to finalize uh, dr odunia what would be your uh, take home message for somebody who's uh, considering starting to offer photobiomodulation in 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 his or her practice I can say these doctors that are that are thinking to introduce photobiomodulation in his uh, practice that it is a safe technique and the patient can be surprised and the doctor can be surprised in some cases uh, uh, seeing uh, rising in visual acuity and contrast sensitivity of the patient then I think you can offer this technique because have no side effects and only benefits. This is my home message for the doctors. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaimak, Dr. Odunia, for sharing your extensive experience uh, in the use of uh, photobiomodulation, uh, for sharing your experience in real life, because there are studies. We know that experience in real life is not always the same as that in studies with the different uh, therapies but you have just shared with us for over one hour your experience of photobiomodulation in age-related macular degeneration and other conditions. Thank you very much to both of you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much Dr. Steinhardt.